Hey guys, welcome back to Jibis, a Cthulhu adventure. In the last episode, we had a look around town and we talked to people in the inn. And well, now we are about to talk to Niku. It's a local kid playing on his phone. I think I'll do the talking. And he has a slingshot, which is very good for us. I think it's this kid's slingshot just lying in the grass. Nah, I can do it myself. That's a cool slingshot you got there, kid. Yes, isn't it crazy that I know about more than just computer screens and video games? Mind blowing, I know. Oh, come on, mind if I take a look at it? Yeah, cause I'm just giving my deadly slingshot away to a stranger, sure. Mm-hmm. Isn't it cooler and more realistic than a video game? I don't know, but it can realistically take your eye out. So which of these two is worse, you tell me? Well, if you put it that way... I made it way too deadly. The world's not ready for it. Right. Mm-hmm. That thing does not look deadly. It's only made from the toughest wood you'll find around these parts, and a virtually unbreakable rubber band. And I've used industrial grade glue to put the thing together. Not only is it deadly, it's indestructible. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, I believe you. Good. Now leave me alone, please. Thank you. So, what are you playing? Call of Beauty 6. I thought shooters sucked on mobile. <sighs> Call of Beauty is not a first-person shooter. It's a survival game. Survival game? Really? Yeah, really. You roleplay this supermodel, and every once in a while, you have to survive on no food before a show, for like three or four days. That's terrible. Games have changed since your days, old man. Everything is realistic now. Disturbingly so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice place, this town. Nothing ever happens here, and I can't even get data on my phone anymore. But yeah, great place. Well, if you looked up from that screen every once in a while, you'd see that it is. Oh, jeez, you're one of those, aren't you? We get it. You grew up hitting a ball against the wall, not glued to the screen. You were so much better off. Thanks for the insight. Bye. Well, uh, no, that's not really what I meant. I was a nerd just like you. Oh yeah, you're totally hip to geekdom and down with the youth, pups. Mm-hmm. Have you seen a girl called Peace around? No, I haven't. Cause I'm one of those losers who won't look up from their screens at the real world. Right? <sighs> that slingshot of yours. <laughs> I'll bet I can take it apart. Easy. <laughs> really, dude? You're on. What are we wagering? Just the satisfaction of being right and in the other guy's face, kid. Tuh. Okay, then. It's on. Okay, so we got the slingshot. Later. Uh-huh. So we talked to Nico already. Yeah, we have Later. exhausted all the options. Okay, so let's try to put that apart. No working necessary, it's functional. Way too big to be a projectile. No forking necessary, it's functional. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Ha! In your face, kid! Man, that stuff was powerful. Alright, so we got that. Let's show that. To hey, Nico. what do you know? An X slingshot. You must have cheated or something. Just admit defeat, Junior. Fine, who cares? I was bored of that thing anyways. So, can I keep the parts? Whatever. So... We do have the Y now, which is nice. I just took them apart, not putting them back together. Why would I? 
Yeah, that is a good question. I keep it as it is. Just to be sure. That would just make. Yeah, make me, me, me not trash. Uh huh. Now we got a helmet. What do you know? Got myself a cute little makeshift helmet. Mm hmm. They don't do. That would just. That. Would make more trash. Wouldn't help. Okay, so we got a helmet. Okay, time to talk to the art critic. This lady's really interested in that mural up there. I think I'll do the talking. Okay, so let's do that. Hi there. I couldn't help but notice you're examining that mural up there. Pardon me? Oh, yes, indeed I am, yes. Can you tell me anything about it? Why, of course. You see, there is a certain ambiguity in regard to the vivacious and decidedly histrionic undertones of the disjunctive perturbation present within the artist's essentially transitional brushwork. Wouldn't you say? Uh... Of course, you must not let this hint of over-specificity on my part overshadow the obviously resonant spatial relationships between the reductive quality of the lines and the commitment to a rigorously formal approach on the artist's behalf. Actually, what you must understand is that the work echoes its own edges with its obsequious interior dialogue, and even replicates itself, paradoxically denying any allusion to a juxtaposed mythopoetical reality. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but what does it all mean? Aren't you paying attention, young man? It signifies that the structuralist paradigm under which the creator diligently operated is flush with interpolated post-dialectic musings that cannot be rightfully ignored. That's oversimplifying it a bit, but yeah, okay. <laughs> what is the significance of the divided heart? It is clearly a corollary of the coronary metaphors which permeate the opacity and quintessential divergence of pervasive aesthetic hierarchies in the artist's oeuvre. Uh, I agree. What can you tell me about this bus ticket? An incisive voyagerial metaphor, rectangularly encased in an obviously sarcastic homage to utter futility and cavalcading materialism. Mm-hmm. What can you tell me about this bus ticket? I mean... Okay. I have this Y-shaped thing. Ah, yes. But pray, what's in a letter? If you prick it, does it not bleed? If you tickle it, does it not laugh? Uh, I would be very surprised if it did. Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. Moving on. Mm-hmm. I have this pocket full of trash. Ah, ah, such a puckish postmodernist cliché turned anti-cliché, or as some would put it, mud full reversed boilerplate. Not an entirely surprising denouement coming from a distinguishably inexperienced dabbler in the arts, but one I uncontemptuously applaud nonetheless. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just trash, really. Precisely. Wink, wink, as they say. <laughs> okay. Will you tell? I have. Yeah, uh, she will. Such a not do... an entirely, but. Yeah. It's okay, she will say the same thing. Uh, conscien uh, cons cons conscientious critic. Okay. Here's the helmet thing. Here's this helmet thing. <laughs> History of telluric and redundantly so. <sighs> I know. Mm hmm. Uh, I'll leave you to your critique. I'll leave you to your critique. Indeed, indeed. Alright, so let's have a look inside here before... Oh my goodness, okay. Uh, go... Oh, ooh, okay, this scenery is just great. Uh, I know that we have the Y and we are going to take care of that, but we are going to take a look it's here the first. It's ancient walls. You can almost feel hundreds of years of history um, leaking... From them? I'm not good at this. <laughs> I'm not having her scale those intimidating walls for no good reason. Right now, they're just for admiring. My word, that's... that's gorgeous. This Indeed. is my homeland, Kitty. 
She doesn't care. She's not going anywhere without me. Breathtaking. But we have things to take care of. Okay, let's have a look at the mural then. An intricate monochrome mural in stark contrast with the intense colors all around it. It seems to tell a pretty convoluted story. <laughs> okay, what can we see? There is... Okay, uh, we can take a closer look. We are going to... Apparently... An intricate monochrome mural in... It seems to tell a pretty convoluted story. So there is this town, which is in uproar. And there are kittens. And above, something that resembles a mage. Someone who resembles a mage. And that mage is fighting a dragon. Really cool. Okay, so... What... Are Just you gonna... Just it yourself, Mr. Art Critic. Okay. An Calm. intricate monochrome mural. It seems to tell a... Yeah, but we can't apparently interact with it right now. Let's have a look at the old man a here. A senior citizen enjoying his time on that bench. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd rather do the talking. Uh, good evening. A good evening to you, young man. Hmm, such a pretty town for Maris. Such a pretty town for Maris. Uh, just a second. Okay, yes. sorry. And an old and storied one, too. Oh, if these walls could speak. The birds, the deaths, the wars. Maybe it's better that they can't speak. Boy, what a sight, huh? Yes, yes, it is superb. The rolling hills with their scents of hay and white flowers. The gently grazing herds. Sometimes I wish they placed this bench the other way around. But um, I guess this way you can admire the mural. Mm-hmm. Is the painting old? <laughs> old, yes. Older than most things in this town. How old exactly, though, I cannot tell you. Hmm. Is there a story behind it? Yes, there is. But do you have the time to listen to it? Mm, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Now, legend has it that a long, long time ago, on top of a mountain overlooking Forum Maris, a Solomonar, that's an ancient wizard, was conjuring thunder and rain when, below, a terrifying Balaur, that's a dragon, attacked the town. The masks, sworn defenders of the town, could not defeat the dragon, but could not live either, so they sent an innocent young shepherd girl by the name of Miwara and her dog Azor to beg for the Solomonar's assistance. Miwara and Azor's journey up the mountain was not without peril. See, the Solomonar had laid many traps and cunning magical obstacles to stop anyone from disturbing his ritual. But Miwara and Azor were smart and agile and resilient, so they made it to the mountain top and told of the dragon's attack. But the Solomonar was red with anger and could not see beyond the fact that a girl and her dog had conquered his defenses. And since they had proven to be smart and agile and resilient, he transformed Miwara and Azor into a black and a white cat, forever cursed to roam the hills and mountains without ever resting again. Then he did make his way down to Forum Maris and found it in smoldering ruins, and the masks all but defeated, making their last stand against the beast. He fought the dragon for three days and three nights, and finally crushed it down into the mountain, burying it in the bowels of the earth. Afterwards, he cried tears of remorse for foolishly cursing the shepherd girl and her dog and erected a monastery in their remembrance. That castle above the town that everyone fears 
Its steeple is all that remains of the monastery the Solomon are built ages and ages ago. It became corrupted, and some folks say that it's from the evil that the remains of the dragon still hold. I hear the masks are once again guarding the castle now that its rightful heir has returned. But who would risk going all the way there to see if it's true? Not many, dear. Not many. Wow, that was fascinating. I'm glad to hear you say that, young man. I'm still here to tell the story, but for how long? No one really knows or cares about it other than me and the masks themselves. Maybe once I'm gone, so it shall disappear into oblivion. Let's hope not. Okay, we can have the story tell, told again, but... I'll be off now. Have a nice evening. You too, young man. Goodbye. All right, that was that was pretty cool actually. So let's leave. Uh, we do have the Y now, and I just want to be sure. I think I'll do the talking. Yeah, I I just did that because I have a feeling that uh, clicking uh, on everything with the cat will result in an achievement, but I'm not totally sure. So. Okay, we have done everything Later. with you. Uh -huh. She still has some options, but that is just strange to me. Hmm. I'll leave you to oh, critique. Alright, okay, so we have done everything here. Oh, okay. The mask guy has gone, now there's a girl with a cat. It's a girl with a cat on a leash. Hmm. Behave, kitty. I know, I know, you haven't said or done anything. Just saying. Let's talk. Hello, little girl. Hi. My name's Buzz, and this is my cat, kitty. Nice to meet you. I'm Maria, and this is <laughs> okay. What in the name of all that is sacred and holy? <gasps> Your kitty can't talk! Yes, she can. For some reason, people don't usually notice. Oh. My. God. Is she magical? As magical as they come. Cool! Hmm. That's a unique looking doggy. He's not a doggy, silly. Can't you see he's a kitty cat? We're really stretching the definition here. But how come he barks? Well, he was raised by a doggy. Duh. His adoptive mommy was a Carpathian sheepdog. Oh, nice. An actual son of a... Well, that's a very <laughs> cool and unique story. So his name is uh, Kiskis. Uh-huh. That's how you get his attention. I want to name him something else, but I haven't come up with anything better yet. I understand. I am now the second most embarrassed cat around. What are you up to, Maria? Oh, just walking. He gets real antsy if I don't walk him at least twice a day. He likes that, huh? Yeah, he's the happiest kitty when he's in nature. I'd love to take him on a walk in the hills or in the mountains, but mom and dad won't let me. It's too far away. I see. Did you happen to see a black girl around? No, I would have remembered that. Almost everyone around here is basically white. It's so boring. Well, it hasn't been sunny in a while either, has it? No, and weather's been crazy lately. Thunderstorms out of the blue. That's why I can't walk in the hills anymore. Uh-huh. I'm a tourist. What can you tell me about Forumaris? Well, everyone says nothing ever happens here. So... God, I hope that's true. Hmm... The black girl we had that Did already. You happen to see... No, 
almost everyone uh well, so boring okay uh -huh. catch you later Maria see you okay so Maria turned out to be a nice girl it's a cool change okay we can't go up there so we have explored everything here in Forum Maris uh, and it's time to give you your why I've got the letter all right you'll need the illuminator what what's an illuminator thing magic makes light what you know what to do with it right uh, not really, no. Not really, no. Illuminator goes first, then you add the letter and start counting. What? Could you be a little more specific? The old Corvinus heart. Light that sucker up. Then add the letter. Then start counting. What? All clear now? I guess. Okay. So, yes, yeah, ha, what? Uh, okay, all right. Could you be a little more specific? <coughs> the old Corvinus heart. Light that sucker up. Then add the letter. Then start counting. What? All clear now? I guess. Okay, I think I kind I... of understand. What? Bye. So that is why we. Uh, why we added that spotlight or we kind of repaired it with the bulb that we got here from the tourist info There's Maria still city hall. We don't care about city hall. We just want to go back and now we are going to take the Y and add it to the spotlight Compulsive combiner. Okay, we got an achievement There we go it will now project a Y on that heart shape. It's neatly divided into nine parts. I guess that's my password right there. Okay, so we got that. Which is nice. We still have some time. That means that we can talk to the old lady now. Nine pieces. That's right, Chiclet. Go on in, then. Wait, wait! I look at you now in this... Light and oh, oh, Corvinus! I, I, forgive me for doubting. You know, you know, of course you know. You are back, Corvinus. Uh, I'm sorry. Is this some Axis granted ritual? I'm not completely understanding. Corvinus, Corvinus redivivus. She's gone. Well, someone got really excited about you for some reason. There's that. She was also married and more than a century old. There's that, too. Let's just go in and figure out this blackout. Corvinus! Corvinus! Shut up, kitty. Okay. At least we can now enter and have a look around. Okay. So here we are. Huh. A severely battered bust. I think it's supposed to be the guy in the portrait. Mm-hmm. It's unmovable, and I'm frankly afraid to touch it. There's like swords sticking out of it. That's really weird. Kitty doesn't care about sculpture, pierced by swords and strangely familiar or not. Mm-hmm. It's a withered portrait of a man with a fiercely intense stare. There's there's something about him. Something strange but familiar. Yeah, you said that already. Kitty, who does this guy remind me of? It's killing me. It looks so familiar. I know this is going to sound bad, but you all sort of look the same to me. Yeah, she said that already. There's nothing to do with it. Just, I guess, admire it. He looks so familiar and I can't place him. Who does this guy remind me of? Hmm. Uh-huh. So that's where the cable goes. Oh. I can sense it coming. Go get that hatch, girl. Fine. Hmm, we have to open it first. Ouch. Hmm. Not exactly short, but that hatch is way out of reach. 
Okay. Yep, that's our internet cable, all right. Looks like it's going up into the ceiling there. Just reaching the cable wouldn't help. Can't reach it. They protrude out of the wall like little fragile bones, bathed in the red disturbing light cast from that sinister window. Okay. Easy there, Lovecraft. Had they still been a ladder? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Oh. Must have hurt, yes, that is Holy true. Holy wow, someone really doesn't want anyone to get past that door. That's by far the most secured ancient Transylvanian door I've ever come across. Mm-hmm. Look, man, we got through some pretty stacked against us odds, but that door? Nah. Hate to say it, but it's not happening. I just really, really want to know what the secret behind it is. Yeah, well... Well? I was trying to think of a way to say some secrets are best left uncovered without sounding cliche, but I failed miserably, okay? We don't need to poke our snouts into every corner of this country. <sighs> yeah, maybe next time we visit. Hmm. <laughs> next time maybe there is There's a sequel. There's no way in heaven, earth, or purgatory I'm getting past that door. I mean, I'm curious, but no way we're ever opening this. Hmm, okay. Alright guys, but I'm really sorry we have hit the end of the episode mark. If you want to know if we can open that hatch or maybe even this door, you'll have to tune in next time for... Jibis, a Cthulhu adventure. See you then.